Hello YouTube users, in this Flash CS4, CS5 platform game tutorial, you will be learning how to make simple enemies. I'm going to make this tutorial as fast and quick as easy as possible. I already typed out all the code for this tutorial, so I'll just explain all of it to save time. This tutorial will be really fast because so many people have asked me to make this, and for a long time. This tutorial is maybe about five to six months overdue. This tutorial is directly after Flash CS4, CS5 platform game tutorial learning to shoot part three. So you can just go to my website boris123beta.dylanmazzetti.com and download the FLA file. I'll leave a link in the description for the download. So let's get started. I added some new movie clips to the FLA file, so I'll run you through it. I have an enemies folder here, and inside it, I have an enemy 1 movie clip and an enemy HP movie clip. The enemy HP movie clip is just a small red bar, and I'll show you why I made this. I'll go into the enemy 1 movie clip. I have four layers. One is a black stroke, which is the same size with the HP movie clip. The HP layer has the enemy HP movie clip with an instance name of HP. And the enemy HP layer is another box with the same size as the HP, but is black and slightly transparent. And the last layer is the body of the enemy, which is just a circle. Make sure you give the enemy HP mover clip an instant name of HP. Now after you make your enemy movie clip, you need to right click it and press properties. Then make sure you check export for action script. Name the class enemy. Now make a new action script free file. Save it as enemy in the same folder as your FLA file. Now let's get into the code. These two first lines are the classes we need to import. We are importing the event class and the movie clip class. Then comes the declaration of the enemy class and it extends the movie clip class. Now as usual, the first thing we do is make our variables. So I have gravity, which is a number and is equal to 1. Y velocity, which is another number, equal to 0 and speed equal to 5. We need the gravity and y velocity so that our enemy can fall and the speed will be used for the speed that the enemy can move. Then I have level underscore mc which will be the floor in our main FLA file and player underscore mc which will be our player in our main file and main timeline which is basically our main FLA file. This public function enemy is our constructor function. It will run every time a new enemy is created. It takes two parameters, level and player, which are both movie clips. In here we set level underscore mc to level and player underscore mc 
to play. I'll explain more on this later. And it adds an event listener. The event listener is added to stage. And the function it will run is on added. So what this basically does is run the on added function every time an enemy is added to the stage. Now what the on added function does is assign main timeline to our root movie clip. That's our main file. Then it adds all these event listeners to the enemy. They are all end of frame events, which means they run the function every frame. The functions they run are update function, make gravity, move enemy, and kill enemy function. I want you to know that these could all be one function, but I wanted to separate the code a bit. And here's the update function. In the update function, we have a for loop. And remember that bullet holder movie clip we made before? Well, this is why we made it. To help the enemy know what to do. Remember, all our bullets are going into the bullet holder movie clip and not the stage. So what we need to do is to check to see if any of the bullets are touching the enemy. That's what the for loop and the bullet holder will help us do. We create an integer, i, and set it to zero. Then we have a condition and an increment. This condition is checking to see if i is less than the number of bullets in the bullet holder. Main timeline dot bullet holder dot num children is actually a number and it's the total number of bullets in our bullet holder. Inside the for loop is a variable this bullet and its data type is movie clip. This variable is one of the bullets in our bullet holder. The next statement checks to see if the bullet is touching the enemy. If it is, then reduce the scale of the enemy's HP. Then call the remove listeners function that we made in the bullet class. And then remove the bullet. As a quick summary, the for loop finds all the bullets in the bullet holder and then checks to see if any of those bullets are touching the enemy. If they are touching, then reduce the enemy's HP. Now we get down to the make gravity function. In this function, it basically adds gravity to the enemy in the same way that we added gravity to the player. Increment y velocity by gravity. Then if the level is not in the enemy's x and y position, then add y velocity to the enemy. Add some terminal velocity so that the enemy does not fall faster than 15 pixels. Then there is a for loop which loops 10 times. Inside it, it checks to see if the level is touching the enemy's x position and y position. If it is, y velocity becomes 0, so the enemy does not keep falling, and minus 1 from the enemy's y position. This is so that the enemy does not stick inside the platform. Now we get to the move enemy function. In simple, this function makes the enemy follow the player along the x-axis. First, we make an x distance variable. This will be the distance between the player and the enemy. In order to calculate this, we need to subtract the x position of the enemy from the x position of the player.
Now we need to make the enemy move towards the player. To do this, we have to find whether the enemy is on the left or the right side of the player. If the distance is negative, then the enemy is on the right side. If the distance is positive, then the enemy is on the left side. So if x distance is less than the player's width divided by 2 minus enemy width divided by 2 then minus the enemy's x position by the speed so that it moves to the left. To move the enemy to the right is the same thing, just that we add instead of subtract and the distance needs to be greater than blah blah and blah. And now the kill enemy function. All this function does really is check to see if the scale of the HP is less than or equal to zero. If so, then remove all the listeners and remove the enemy. Now that I think of it, I should have named this function die, because the enemy doesn't kill itself, it dies. It's the player's job to know how to kill the enemy, not the enemy's job. The enemy's job is to know when to die. In fact, it's kind of like if a truck hits you, you know? It's your body's job to know, hey, if I get hit by a truck, I need to die, bro. It's the truck's job to know that, hey, if I run over you, I'm going to kill that squishy little light bulb. And last is the remove listeners function that removes all the listeners. This will be useful when we get into pausing. Now we need to go back into our main FLA file and add just a few more lines. All the way to the bottom of your code, make a new variable, enemy1 timer. Its data type is a timer and it's equal to a new timer with an argument 5000. Now we need to add an event listener to the enemy1 timer. It's a timer event, all in caps, which is a property of the timer event class. And it's gonna run this function create enemy one. Then we tell the enemy one timer to start. And here is the create enemy function. The create enemy one function creates a new enemy called enemy one underscore MC. It passes in floor and player as its arguments. Then we set the enemy X position to the right side of the stage. Finally, we add the enemy. In short, these lines make a new enemy every 5 seconds. Test the movie to see it in action. And now we have enemies generating every 5 seconds which follow the player, and we can kill them. Well, it seems like this tutorial took longer than I thought, but who cares? You can make enemies, right?